Here we have a 2024 Santa Cruz SEL non-activity package. The purpose of this video will be to go through each of these buttons and screens and menus to show you how everything works, something that you can use prior to purchasing the vehicle to get you an idea of what features are on the vehicle and how things operate, or also after you've purchased, you won't remember everything that you go through during the delivery process. So this will be something nice that you can refer back to the SEL non-activity package has been left relatively unchanged since it came out in 2022, so this will be valid for the 2022, 23, and 24 model years. We're going to start with this screen here. We'll be utilizing the buttons on the side of the steering wheel on each side to navigate through each of these screens, as well as utilizing the touch screen there in the center. Generally speaking, the keys over on this side of the steering wheel are going to operate this screen here. Keys on this side of the steering wheel will operate that screen there in the center. So if we start with this screen here, you're going to see at the very top corner of the screen in the left, you'll see your gear position to the right of that. That 124 is your miles until empty. Bottom of the screen, bottom right corner, shows the total miles on the car where it displays 14. Directly above that, the temperature outside of the vehicle. What you're seeing in the center right now is the digital speed display, and we can adjust that using this key here. So as we use that key to scroll through these four main menus you see on the top there, we'll pause first on that very first menu. We'll use the up and down keys here as well as pushing this in for OK to select on some screens. So first thing we'll see is you have your lane departure system information and you have your driver attention level. Lane departure screen, those lines on the left and right of the vehicle display there are going to illuminate when the vehicle senses the lines on the road. That says hold OK for settings, and what you're going to see if we hold OK there is it's going to bring up the settings for all of your advanced safety features. So this is where you can change things like your warning timing, your warning method, your driver attention warning it can be toggled on and off. Uh, you can change your forward safety information, all of your lane safety, blind spot, parking. Great thing about this vehicle is it's highly customizable. You can really get in and customize how all of these advanced safety features work because at the end of the day, you're not going to love all of them or you're not going to be comfortable with some of them. So you can turn those on and off. You can increase sensitivity, decrease sensitivity. A lot of great features in there. Driver attention level is going to monitor things like how long you've been driving, how well you've been maintaining lane, and warn you when it might be time for a break from behind the wheel. Again, you can toggle that on and off. We'll just press that button here again, enter into the next set of menus. What you're going to see is that digital display of the speed that we were viewing earlier. Your drive info, which is a trip that automatically resets every time you start the car. Your since refueling trip, which is going to reset every time you refuel. And then your accumulated info, which is like a traditional trip that won't reset until you manually press and hold this OK button to reset it. Next screen over, it's going to get us over to our user settings. So the driver assistance features are what we already viewed from that first screen. Your cluster is where you can adjust different things within the cluster. This vehicle has the ability to change the wallpaper to some different themes there. You have the ability to change your wiper and lights display. So what you'll see there is when you turn the wiper and lights on. It's actually going to tell you up on screen what you did. Really handy, especially when you're just learning how the vehicle operates. So I usually recommend leaving those on, at least in the beginning. Going down from there, you have your icy road warning if you ever want to toggle that on and off. And then you have a welcome sound, just a little chime that goes off when you turn the vehicle on. Your light settings, you'll have your illumination levels in here first go through your different illumination levels. Door will have your auto lock and auto unlock features as well as the two press unlock that you can toggle on and off. 
Convenience has your rear occupant alert. That's gonna warn you if you have someone or something in your back seat that you might need to attend to before exiting the vehicle. Your welcome light, which just means when you approach the vehicle, you'll get some exterior lighting on to help you get in. And then your service interval that you can enable or disable, change the interval itself to whatever you prefer, and then you can do your reset through here as well. Down in units, this is basically where you're gonna change from uh, Kelvin to Celsius to Fahrenheit, um, your different speed units, fuel economy units, all of those things if you happen to be traveling out of the country or from out of the country. You have your reset here to reset to factory default if you'd ever like to do that. Uh, sometimes that's beneficial if you're purchasing a used vehicle, you can start fresh. And then you have your oil change reminder, which is an actual percentage of oil life remaining. Uh, kind of similar to what's here in your convenience with your service interval, but uses a percentage method to track it instead of a miles and days. Next screen over, and we're gonna to get to the last screen here. This is gonna show how the power is being dispersed to the four wheels on the vehicle. Kind of neat to see how this operates when you're driving, especially when you're getting used to the vehicle. It shows you how that all-wheel drive automatically engages and disengages. Of course, this is only on the all-wheel drive models that you're gonna see that. And then your tire pressure display. It's showing drive to display, which just means you have to drive the vehicle a little bit to wake those sensors up and have it send that data to the computer for what your actual individual tire pressure is for each tire on the vehicle. So that's all of the screens there. Whatever screen you leave it on is the screen it'll stay on. So a lot of people like that digital display of the speed there. Other items on the dash are pretty self-explanatory. You have your analog speed to the far left, your tachometer to the far right, your fuel display over there just inside of that, and then your engine temperature on the other side. Your other buttons you're gonna have on the steering wheel here are going to be your cruise control. You'll get to your cruising speed and press that once. That's gonna both turn the cruise on and set the cruise to the speed that you're currently traveling at. You can then decrease and increase speed there, pause and resume there, and then toggling your lane keep assist on and off here. So you have a couple of different items that you can toggle off here. So by pressing and holding this, you'll see that white icon, the car with the two lines on either side, will turn on and off. That's gonna be your uh, lane departure system. And then you also have the ability to just press this button once for the active steering assist. And you'll see that steering wheel come up. So that's a nice way to be able to toggle those features on and off quickly without entering into your menu system to get to them. You have your wipers over here. So one click down is gonna to get to intermittent. Your intermittent speed is adjusted here. And again, you see up on screen as you make adjustments. Then going down through low and then high. And then if it's misting, if they're in the off position, you just toggle it up there real quick and you'll get just one swipe of the wipers. You pull this in to clean the front windshield. And then on the other side, you're gonna have your headlights. Again, as you change through your headlights, you're gonna see up on screen what they're doing. You have the auto position, you have the daytime running lights, and then you have the always on. Even if you're in always on, these lights are gonna shut off when you shut the vehicle off. The only way for you to physically leave the headlights on would be if you shut the vehicle off and then turn to these off and back on. Then it's going to leave them on. Otherwise, you don't have to worry about ever leaving your headlights on. When you are down here in auto mode, you can push this whole thing forward and you're gonna see your auto high beam display come on. High beams are gonna automatically brighten and dim as you're driving without you having to do anything. Now we'll head over to this screen here. This is gonna be your audio, your phone, um, all of your different menus based off of this screen itself. And again, I mentioned over here on the side, 
you've got your different toggles and buttons to operate that screen. So over here on this screen, uh, when you start up the vehicle, this is what you're gonna see. You're gonna see the date and time at the top. Uh, over in the top right corner here, you're gonna see your Blue Link information. Right now, this vehicle isn't active on a Blue Link package or tied to anyone's account, so that's why you're seeing that icon. And then once a phone is connected, you're gonna also get an icon there for your reception. The screen is touch screen, and then you have uh, touch buttons on the side as well. We do. Home button there at the top and accessing this I usually tell people to kind of get used to using the buttons on the sides of the screen because those aren't ever going to go anywhere your screen is going to be at different locations at different times whereas these buttons on the side aren't going anywhere and those buttons on the side navigate through probably 90% of what you're going to use on this vehicle on a normal daily basis so we'll start here with radio when you toggle the radio on you get the display here this is gonna turn the radio on and display whatever was playing last. To change through the bands, you have your button here to go AM, FM, and XM. You can enter in a channel by hitting enter channel. Your menu will have your ability to shut the display off completely, bring up a full channel list, which can be really nice when you're just getting started and you wanna start setting up your favorites. You can just go through here and click the star key on any of your favorites and it's going to go ahead and add them over here to your list. Another thing you can do when you're just getting started, you can come on here and go to delete presets, mark all and delete. And this is going to start from fresh so you can put in whatever you want for your own presets. Then from there you can just go through the bands, start setting up your presets and they're all going to display right over here once you have them set up. Even within AM and FM, you still have your ability to enter in a station, and you also have the station list, which will go out and search any of the stations in your, lo your local area. It'll load up a whole list for you, and then you can toggle right next to here to click on which stations you'd like to add to your favorites. Once you go through all of that, again, you're gonna see all of those favorites right over there on the left-hand side of the screen. The media button over here, is gonna bring up all of your other media sources. Right now we don't have anything connected, so it's just gonna come up on the top and say no media source available. If we had a phone connected, you'd have Bluetooth that comes up as available. If you had one plugged in to the USB over here, same thing, and then you can also plug in a flash drive to listen to music directly from that. Over on the other side, your seek and track buttons are gonna go through all of your favorite radio presets that you have saved or if you're playing music from your phone or a device, you're gonna get through all of your different tracks on your device there as well. Your setup menu is just gonna bring up a similar menu to what we had over on the screen here, where you have the ability to customize everything. Wildly customizable, all the way down to every little aspect of the sound. I'm not gonna go through every one of these menus because we could spend hours doing this, but really recommend going through and seeing what all your different options are in all of these different menus to see how you can have things set up. And then any questions that you come across, don't hesitate to comment down below and I'll come on and individually ask, answer any questions, any roadblocks you run into, things in any of these menus that I didn't go through that don't quite make sense, just comment below and I'll, uh, I'll answer those for you. This button over here, the star key, what this is gonna do is you have two different star keys around the vehicle. You have your custom button key on the audio display, and then you have another one over here on the left-hand side of the steering wheel. You can set either of those up to do whatever you want. So I like mine to be set up, uh, my audio display uh, star key to be set up as home. What that's gonna do is if I'm ever in a menu that I'm not familiar with and don't know how to get back to the main menu, this star key is gonna get me there. Now, most of the time, you're always gonna have that home button in the top corner, but if you have Android Auto or Apple CarPlay set up, it's gonna take over this whole screen and you're not gonna have that home key anymore. So that's why I like to use that as my home key. To set up Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, you just click right here, go to add new, and it's gonna go through everything to set that up for your vehicle right directly from your phone. 
Over here you have your volume. You've seen me adjust that a few times. And when you adjust your volume, it's gonna tell you right here what volume you're adjusting. The reason that's noteworthy is if you have your phone connected and it's telling you navigation directions or something over your phone, then as you go through the volume levels there, it's going to come up and tell you that that's the volume level you're adjusting. It allows you to adjust all of your different volume levels as you set the vehicle up and then it remembers those as you go. So if you're driving along and the navigation directions from your phone say something to you while it's talking, you're adjusting the volume, it's going to remember what volume you like that at and keep it there in the future until you change it again. Tune and file. This is going to tune through individual audio stations or scroll through different files if you have a jump drive or USB drive set up to have your music playing from on there. Next screen down is going to be our climate control. So basically pressing any button there will turn on the climate control. Then from there, uh, your driver side is going to adjust just the driver side. I'm sorry, it's going to adjust both sides if you're synced which we are right now. If the passenger was to change their side, it's gonna change only the passenger side, and you'll see that sync button was deselected, meaning that the temperatures are no longer synced to one another. Passenger gets out and you want them to both be synced to yours, you just hit sync again, it's gonna bring those both back to the same temperature. The auto climate control in this vehicle is gonna be enabled anytime you see anything highlighted above auto. The reason you see three different levels here is that's your high, medium, and low auto setting. So auto climate control is going to automatically do what it has to do to maintain the temperature in the vehicle to what you have it set to. So it's going to automatically change fan speeds and all of those things behind the scenes without you having to do anything. Anytime you override this and you manually change the fan speed or you change the direction of the air, you're gonna see auto goes away, and it's just gonna blow that temperature air in that direction at that speed until you change it again. So auto mode is generally where you'll wanna leave that. You then have your front defroster, your rear defroster, and when you turn your rear defroster on, it's gonna to automatically toggle on the heated side view mirrors as well. Down below that, we have two USBs. The significance there is the USB over on this side is going to both charge a device and interact with the screen. So if you have someone in the vehicle that maybe their phone's not paired to the vehicle, you don't want their phone to be paired to the vehicle, but you want to listen to music or utilize their Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, they can plug in here. It's going to bring all of that data up to the big screen, and then when they unplug, it just goes away and you don't have them in the phone list there. The other side is going to be just for charging a device and then the 12 volt power supply in the center is going to be just a regular plug 12 volt if you need to utilize that. Down below here, uh, one thing that we'll start with up here on the gear position, we can bring this down into drive and you'll see the ability to slide this whole thing over and now you'll see that were highlighted here with the plus and minus, and you can just push this up and down to go through the gears if you ever decide you want to drive in a higher or lower gear than what the vehicle is set at. Some people do that sometimes for fuel economy reasons or for driving down hills in the winter. There's a few different situations I've come into where people want to be able to have the ability to do that. Down here, we have the all-wheel drive lock. All-wheel drive is going to automatically engage and disengage as needed as you're driving. It happens behind the scenes, you don't even know what's, that it's happening. Uh, but if you ever do want to lock that in, maybe a really, really bad day in the snow or you're off-roading or something like that, you can lock that all-wheel drive in. Your auto brake hold down here, what that's going to do is once that's active, you'll see a little icon up here that says auto hold. Once you come to a complete stop, that's going to turn green and it's going to hold you in place until you hit the gas again. So it'll sit there with the vehicles or the brakes applied. You can remove your foot from the brake, good for stop and go traffic, drive throughs, and then once you hit the gas, it's going to automatically continue going forward. Electronic parking brake is here. You'll pull that up to engage it. You get a little red icon on there that says your parking brake is on. 
and then to disengage it, it's a two-step process. You'll press the brake pedal down and then press that button down as well and it'll disengage the parking brake. Downhill brake assist will aid in downhill braking so you don't have to ride the brakes when you're going downhill. And then your backup camera will automatically come on when you put the vehicle in reverse. But if you're getting ready to back up and wanna kinda of see what's around you without being in reverse, we'll press that on and it'll show the backup camera up there on screen. Then just behind that, you have your heated seat buttons for driver and passenger side. You have some buttons up here, Blue Link if you're ever in need of roadside assistance, SOS if there's ever an emergency, and then this turns all the lights in the car on. Otherwise, with this being depressed, the lights in the car will turn on. When you open the doors, they'll turn back off when you close the doors. No auto dimming on this particular vehicle, so you'll just toggle this back and forth for that. You have some buttons over the left side of the wheel here that's going to increase and decrease the brightness of the screens, both here and here. You have your cargo lights to toggle on and off, and then if you ever want to disable your traction control. Over here, you have your uh, mirror settings at the very top of there. You'll toggle to the left and right mirror and then use the keys there. Lock, unlock, windows, and then at the very bottom locks out the rear windows, child safety window feature. If you have any other questions about how any features operate or any other videos that you'd like made, please comment below. Uh, this will be part of a full video series showing uh, each individual model and then the differences between each one. Really appreciate you taking time to watch this. Please like and subscribe. It really makes a big difference for me. It allows me to keep making these videos and have a great day.